So like in the video, if you go to wolframcloud.com, you can go ahead and see here we have a couple of options ready to go, but I'm going to go ahead and select the programming cloud um, and I'm going to go ahead and log in. <laughs> Okay, great. So this is the primary interface for the Wolfram Programming Cloud, as you guys probably saw in the video. Um, so there's another video here if you guys want to go ahead and get started again. Um, and if you guys also just want to play around with some of the examples, uh, see another fast introduction for programmers, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or if you want to just go ahead and create a new notebook, which is the primary interface for writing Wolfram language code, you can go ahead and do that. Um, I already have a notebook ready, uh, ready to go, so I can go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and open it here. And as soon as it loads. Awesome. Cool, so I'm going to go ahead and get started walking you guys through some of this code. Um, and so, yeah, I'll just go ahead and get started, um, answer questions hopefully along the way, but I'll just try to keep going through um, and see if this goes, this goes all right. Um, so for starters, like I said, I wanted to have a trip planner um, function. I want to make a trip planner app of sorts. Um, so we're going to go ahead and declare a function called trip planner. Um, and we're going to give it three parameters. So namely, we're going to give it temperature, uh, we're going to give it wind direction, and we're going to give it wind speed. Um, the idea of this trip planner is that if you ultimately we're going to enter two cities um, and evaluate them against each other, and you can see, you know, city one, here's the temperature, wind direction, wind speed. City two, here's the temperature, wind direction, wind speed. It's super simple app. Um, but you can see just how quickly um, and how easily it can get deployed to the cloud um, through here. But so for starters, uh, we're going to head, like I said, we have three parameters, temperature, wind direction, and wind speed. Uh, they're followed by an underscore to declare that they are uh, parameters. And then this is our little notation for this is start of a function. So now we have uh, a width. Uh, function and essentially what with does is you can provide it a variable here um, and in any instance that it sees with uh, the variable somewhere in there it's going to go ahead and replace that variable definition with its value so in this case I'm providing its size and I'm saying a hundred um, and specifically I want to provide it so that later on here um, which I'll get to in just a couple seconds um, that our images remain a pretty consistent size, about 100 all around. So now I'm, I want this, uh, I want to start a row. And within that row, I want to have the following things. So in here, I want to have this icon data of air temperature evaluated at temperature, which is our variable. And I want to show that with the image size of size. Um, so specifically, I can actually go down here. Um, let's go ahead and show what icon data could do. So let's provide it air temperature, and let's give it, let's say, 15, um, and it should come back. So that's essentially what an icon data looks like. Um, if you want to see something else, so let's see wind direction, wind direction. We can go ahead and evaluate that using Shift Enter. Bam, there you go, same idea. Um, it goes ahead and interprets this 15 uh, as its input and then adjust the icon accordingly. Um, so yeah, we're going, to head, we're going to go ahead and do show icon data for air temperature um, with the variable temperature and evaluate that image size size. And now we're going to delimit each of our things in the row by a comma. So we're going to have comma. And again, show icon data wind direction uh, with the wind direction parameter. Um, again, evaluate it at size. Um, and then finally, once again, uh, we're going to have show icon data wind speed, wind speed parameter, image size as size. Um, and for those of you guys who want to take a look at what uh, wind speed, the wind speed icon looks like, oops, let's go ahead and evaluate that. Same idea, it just instead of having the direction, it just put, throws the number in that icon as well. 
Okay, awesome. So now that we have our initial function definition, we can go ahead and evaluate that and it will be ready for us to use later on. So we're going to go ahead and evaluate this cell, shift enter. And it should have evaluated. To prove that it evaluated, we're going to go ahead in here. We're going to type in trip planner. Let's say our temperature is 80 degrees Celsius. It's a hot day. Uh, wind direction is, I don't know, let's say 20. And wind speed is 45. Um, I don't know where you'll ever get those that you know degrees and that wind speed, but oh well. Um, and so bam, there you go. And that's exactly what we wanted. So we wanted to specify and put everything in a row and then display those icons accordingly all in a row together. And that's exactly what we wanted. So now, given all of that, we want to actually then go down here um, and, hold on one second here. So let me get, I'll add these in later. Oops. Um, so now we want to actually have our overarching trip planner function. Like I said, it wants to take, we want to give it a location, first location and a second location. And then we want to have it display that accordingly. So again, same notation as above. Um, specify its parameters and give it an underscore to ensure that they are parameters. Um, and then we're going to, again, signify the start of a function. Now um, we're going to wrap them in a column. Um, so the idea behind this is that we want to stack, uh, we want to stack for one city, uh, we want all of that data, and then for the second city we want all of that data as well. And then you're going to see here we're also going to have a distance between uh, two points, which I'll actually get into right now. So um, here we're going to specify a new row uh, within our column, and we're going to provide it the text. The total distance is, as well as this geodistance function uh, between location one and location two. And we're actually we can evaluate here. Um, so we can go ahead and call geodistance. It takes in two entities. Um, so like saying, like in the video, we can hit control enter and let's give it, let's say Houston is one. Uh, ooh, that's not where I wanted to go. Houston, awesome. And I don't know, Chicago, let's say. And give it a second to see what that is. So if I hover over both of these, you can see that the actual Wolfram language code for this ends up being entity of city, specifically Houston, Texas, United States. Similarly for Chicago, entity of city, Chicago, Illinois, United States. So now if we evaluate this, give it a second. There you go. So the distance between Houston and Chicago is 899.246 miles, although it's 899.246. Um, so anyways, yeah, um, let's get back to up here. So now you know what the geodistance function does. Um, and now we're going to specify again in our columns, we're going to provide the first thing, I guess, if you will, um, a trip planner. So we're going to make a call to our trip planner function up here. And specifically, we're going to provide it uh, the weather data call for location one, temperature. So that matches up here. We're going to then call, again, weather data wind direction for location one, matches up there. Weather data location one, wind speed. And we're going to call the trip planner function on all of that, and that'll render as one entity in a column of itself. And then similarly, you can probably imagine for our second column, we're going to go ahead and call trip planner again, and we're going to go ahead and provide the exact same things. We're just going to give it weather data of location two, temperature, weather data location to wind direction, weather data location to wind speed. Um, and now that's all set up just fine. And we can go ahead and wrap that and finish that in our column. So now let me go ahead and evaluate this um, so that we have now the new trip planner definition uh, in our code library, if you will. <coughs> cool, so that seemed to work. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this for now. Um, so we can, Go ahead and call trip planner. Again, troll equals, let's go ahead and do Houston. So bam, comma, Chicago, bam. Cool. Um, so from this, you should essentially see, or we should essentially see, um, the output 
which would be just the total distance and then a grid of these stacked upon each other like we said here in this column call um, and by providing it trip planner entity is one entity in the column and then this is a new entity in the column as well. So let's see how this goes. And it's going to be, give it a second here. So there you go, perfect initializing city data indices and weather data indices because of our weather data calls. Um, these tend to be a little bit slow for whatever odd reason. There's a lot of data it needs to pull in. It's doing things. Awesome. Cool. So total distance is 899.246 miles like we had seen before. And then it stacks up here uh, with temperature, wind direction, wind speed, temperature, wind direction, wind speed. Awesome. Now, that's, we could end it there, but that's no fun. Let's actually go ahead and deploy this to the cloud um, as a web form. And it's an instant web form that anybody should be able to access. And from there, they can enter their own inputs and it'll evaluate accordingly. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use the cloud deploy function. And for those of you guys who haven't maybe noticed already, there is built-in autocomplete into the programming cloud. So if you type in cloud, it gives you everything that starts with cloud. Um, but we specifically want to use cloud deploy. And we, and again, here's form or auto-completing or whatever. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and skip through that. So we want form function. We want to deploy a form. And now we want to give it, let's say, two parameters. So city1 is, oh, let me close that, is a city. And city2 is also a city. Oh, sorry about that. City. Cool. So we specified our parameters. Um, we want to give it a function to evaluate at. So we're going to go ahead and say trip planner, perfect, of now hash city1, hash city2, evaluate that. We're going to close that there um, for the form, and we're going to close the cloud deploy as well. So that being said now, let's also give it actually an output to render as, let's say, PNG. We want to render it as an image. OK, so let's deploy this to the cloud now. Hopefully this works. Awesome. So let's give it Houston, Chicago. Remember, as you saw in the video, these are Wolfram Smart Fields, um, aka if you provide it something like City of Angels or anything that can identify um, something as a city, it'll interpret that properly. Um, but obviously, if you provide it something like chicken, um, it'll say you're wrong. Um, and so that's really nice to have built into the form, uh, automatic you know, error checking, things like that. Um, so if we submit this, give it a second to evaluate everything, and hopefully things went all right. <laughs> I'm really hoping this goes all right. <laughs> Still loading, and huzzah, there you go. That's exactly what we wanted. Um, it, you could, we can add things to this, um, such as, you know, let's say uh, boundaries, or let's add a little bit of padding around here. Um, we can make it bigger, whatnot. Um, but for just a basic, simple starter project, you saw how quick and easy that was. Um, and so yeah, I think that would be kind of just the basics of it. Um, so hopefully you guys saw just how quick and easy it is to deploy from the cloud. So yeah, I think we're good to go from here for now. Um, so let's uh, get some feedback. I'll let uh, Chris Carlson go ahead and introduce uh, the developer panel. Um, and once again, I wanted to say thank you guys for being here today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into the introductions of everybody and get started with the code review.